Okay, if anybody has questions or anything, just stop me or type into the chat or something and I'll answer it if I can. Um, I'll just start by saying the objectives for this game, you know, you uh, basically trying to destroy the other person's homeworld or in a multiplayer game, you know, the first person to destroy the homeworld of one other player will become the winner. And your homeworld is the one uh, that has all the ships around it right now and has a name with the 20 on it. And they just came out with like a shorter version of the game where if you want to play and you don't want to go all the way to destroying a homeworld, you can get colony points. And there's a couple ways you can do that, either by destroying an enemy colony or uh, having a, a full strength colony outside of your home system. Um, so I'll start, I'll just kind of show some of the ship counters and what's on them and what it all means. One second, let me pull some out. All right, take a look over on the right side of the map. I pulled out three blue ships. And um, if you look at the one in the bottom left, it says DD4. And uh, that's basically going to show what type of ship it is. DD is going to be a destroyer, BB battleship, and, and so on. The number is going to represent its uh, fleet ID number. In the physical game, each of the, you have a limited number of these counters, and then you're going to have uh, numeric counters that you're going to put underneath them to say how many ships are in that fleet. The number is going to correspond to that fleet on your sheet of paper that's going to track the technology level of all of your ships in that fleet. So you can have that hidden information um, and just track it all on a piece of paper. So then the, if you go down on the left side, you've got the letter D, and then you know the battleship has a letter A. Those are the class of the ship. And basically, all those are going to do is, when you're in combat, it's going to determine the order in which they fire. So all the A-class ships are going to fire first, and then B is all the way down to E. The two numbers in the bottom left, the first number is the attack rating and the second number is the defense rating. And you're going to use the those numbers to determine uh, what you have to roll to hit your target in combat. And finally in the bottom right you've got like an X, 1, 2, or 3. The That's going to be the hull size. And the hull size is going to be the number of hit points or the number of hits it can take in battle before it's destroyed and also um, how much maintenance points it costs you during the economic phase per ship. Now during the game all your ships are going to be masked and face down and your opponents are just going to see the back of them so they're not going to know what you have out there or how many. And then uh, take a look at the colony ship. It is never going to be masked. Colony ships, miners, and uh, pipelines will never be face down. And they'll also never have numeric counters. And you can tell that because they don't have a, a class rating letter, so they're considered non-combat ships. So they're just kind of out there floating around. Alright, now when we set up, 
we're set up here with the uh, two-player small map so that we can make sure we get some conflict happening at some point during the demo. But in all scenarios, when you set up the game, you're going to use your your home system tiles, and from you know, depending on your color, it's going to have that color in the square on the back. The tiles that have the white square are deep space. And those are more profitable and extremely dangerous. So we're going to set up, uh, we already have it set up, but you'll set up your your home tiles and your home system, and then everybody's going to start with three scout ships, three colony ships, a miner, and four shipyards. And those are all already out there. Hidden, or if you're synced to me with, this, with the password blue, you should be able to see my ships. Anybody need help getting that set up? Yeah, thanks, Joel. So the basic flow of the game is going to be in turn order. Um, each person is going to do a movement, and then any combat, and then any exploration that needs to happen. For movement, you can move any or all of or none of your ships that you want up to their maximum movement value. And their movement, their movement points are going to be based on your movement technology level for that fleet. Everybody starts with a base of one technology level, so all ships have a movement value of one per turn. Now to move into one of these unexplored systems, even if I had more than one movement point available, I would have to start adjacent to it and move into it and stop. I couldn't continue continue my movement or move from further away to explore it. In the beginning, though, that's not really going to matter. So, um, Mike, let's uh, just roll to see who's going to go first. Okay, this might be a good opportunity for you to op have everybody open up the uh, technology window and you kind of explain all of the different stuff that's uh, available. Yeah, zero is ten. Yeah, the, the charts are built into the game. Um, I'm not really sure where it is. It's right next to the battle. It's the little beakers up on the there that box there right to the right of the battle uh, box. Okay, yeah. That'll bring up the player aid for research and, um, and ships. And if you go to the research page of that, it has a list of every technology that's available, you, available to you in the game how much it costs to upgrade it, and then what that gives you. So, you know, I was talking about movement technology. If you look, it's you know, the fifth tech down, move one through six. Everybody starts with move one, and it says you can move one hex per turn. And if I get move two, then I can move one hex in the first two turns, and two hexes in the third turn of each economic phase. Um, but I'll just go down real quick and talk about each each one. Ship size, basically you're limited to the types of ships you can build at the beginning of the game, and you have to increase your ship size to be able to unlock bigger and bigger ships. Um, attack and defense technologies, they just add to your 
attack and defense numbers of your ships in battle. Um, you can see for like attack 2 and 3 it says up to the ship's limit. What that means is you can never increase your attack rating through technology more than the hull size of the ship. Um, tactics, that's going to determine which side fires first if you have if you both have the same class of ship. So if we both have class A ships, whichever class A ship has higher tactics rating is going to shoot first. And then if that's still a tie, then the defender fires first. Movement I already talked about. Terraform. Um, in your home system, you're going to have a bunch of planets that you can colonize. But there's one planet in your home system and then a bunch in deep space. Well, all planets in deep space are considered barren. And you have to have terraforming researched before you can colonize any of those barren planets. Uh, the exploration tech is an add-on to your cruisers that lets you peek at a tile before you, if you're adjacent to it, without having to move in and just kind of hope that it's okay. And then the shipyard tech allows your shipyards to be more efficient. So when you build ships, you can only build ships up to their capability. So if I have, I have four shipyards to start the game, in my home planet, though those shipyards can only build up to four hull sizes per economic phase, and any combination. So I could build a a one hull size and a three hull size, or four one hull sizes, you know, whatever. But I can't exceed that. The shipyard tech lets that, you know, you can see it goes one and a half, and then two hull sizes per shipyard, so they're more efficient. Uh, the fighter tech lets you build carriers and fighters, and then the f the fighter level um, just makes them more powerful fighters, which you can see on the ship chart in a second. And then a lot of this other stuff is just kind of <coughs> counters to other things. So point defense is the counter to fighters. It's an add-on to your scouts. Scouts normally have an attack rating of 3 and a class of E, but if they have a point defense, then they can attack fighters with a class of A and an attack rating of 6, 7, or 8. Uh, the cloaking lets you build raiders, and, you know, your raiders can cloak and fly around and, you know, harass people in the enemy's back lines without having to be in combat. But then, if they have scanners, they can detect you. Um, the mine tech just lets you build mines, which are really nasty. When you build mines, um, if they're revealed in combat, then before any shooting happens, they just destroy ships. It doesn't matter how big they are, how many hits they could normally take, one mine kills one ship. And the attacker, or the, the person who controls the mines, gets to pick which ship. And then the mine sweep tech lets you build mine sweepers, which can clear out mines before they destroy our ships. You want to go over the what the shape the ships are real quick in that middle tab. Just a, I mean, a real quick run through what what the different uh, columns mean. I mean, the on the reference card under ships, it basically is just going to give you how much they cost to build. The third column there is the the CP cost, construction points, and then all the other information: the attack strength, defense strength, and uh, armor and all that, 
that's all on the ship counter. So we'll look at that when we get to the economic phase and decide what we're going to build. Any questions or anything? Okay. Um, the basic flow of the game, we're going to have economic phases. But in between each economic phase, there's going to be three turns of movement in combat and exploration for each player. So when we start the game, I rolled high, so I'm going to go first and I'm going to start, I'm going to move all of my ships. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start exploring my home system by moving my scouts out from my home planet into these unexplored areas. And early in the game, you really can play simultaneously. Um, turn order really doesn't matter until we get close to each other and it's actually, we can start shooting at each other. So to save time and make the game go by a lot quicker, just go simultaneously. Then when someone gets close to somebody, then we start reverting back to, to turn order. Yeah, exactly. So now you can see I moved each of my scouts into three separate areas and I brought a colony ship with each one of them. Now normally colony ships and miners and anything that doesn't have an attack rating um, or a combat class could not enter an unexplored system, but if it's accompanied by a combat ship then it's okay. And the reason I'm doing that is because if I find a, um, a uh, unoccupied planet, I want to be able to colonize it right away. So I get the, I start growing my colony as fast as possible. So once everything's moved, there's no combat, so we'll just go ahead and explore. And all you're going to do is every uh, hex that has a ship in it of yours with an unexplored tile, we're just going to flip them over. Alright, so I got a mineral, a nebula, and an asteroids. So I'll start, I'll talk about the mineral real quick. Um, minerals are one-time resources. And they have the number on them, 5. You, know, like you can see the, the 20 on my home system means during the economic phase it's going to give me 20 construction points um, toward my economy to build a research technology. And that'll be every, every economic phase. However, minerals, if I can pull them to one of my colonies or home planet, will give me a one-time boost of 5, or in deep space there are 10s. So to do that, I have to move my miner over to it and take it to one of my planets. And I'll do that on my next turn. Now the nebula and asteroids are like your war game terrain in space. And they're going to affect your movement a little bit. You Just like unexplored areas, you can't move into those spaces unless you start adjacent to them and when you move into them you have to stop. Also, they'll have some effect in combat. Okay, now Mike managed to find a planet right next to his home system, lucky him. So and he had a colony ship with it, so what's going to happen is that colony ship He's going to put it right on top of that planet, and then during the next economic phase, that is going to turn into his first colony. 
That's turn one, so now we'll go on to turn two. And start with movement again, and we can continue going simultaneously. Alright, so I moved my miner over to this mineral, so I'll just plop that on top there. And then flip over the system markers. Okay, well, I found a planet, so I'll put my colony ship on that. But now I also found a black hole. Uh, every player's home system has one black hole in it, and um, what's going to happen with the black hole is I'm going to have to roll a die for each of the ships in my that moved in there, and if it's a 1 through 6, they live, and a 7 through 10, they die. But I roll separately for each ship. So I'm going to roll for my, <laughs> I'm going to roll for my scout. He rolls a 5, he's okay. And my colony ship is 4, so he's okay. Every time you move into that hex, you'd have to make a roll. Um, now, there is a way that you can um, kind of bypass it with the pipelines. I'll talk about that when I get to the economic phase about pipelines. And in the uh, advanced rules, optional rules, you can slingshot, uh, give yourself extra movement by going into a black hole and slingshotting out of it, but there's, you still have to roll and there's a better chance that you could get destroyed. Okay, turn three. Movement. Now my miner has this mineral attached to it, so all I'm going to do is move that back to my home planet and drop it off. Okay, explore. All right, so after we finish the third turn of the economic phase, we're going to do the, you know, economic bookkeeping stuff. So if you take a look on the left side of the board, it has the, the phase sequence here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do mine on the spreadsheet that's built into the module, and then once I input it, everyone should be able to see it who's synced um, as the blue player. Yeah, but but don't yeah. do it yet. Well, could they could they do it now just to kind of follow along as you go through it, or are you going to do it at the end and just explain it? No, I'm going to put in all the numbers, and then then the, they won't be able to see it until I close it out, and then they open it. Gotcha.
thing that uh, nebulas or asteroids do for yeah, us? Yeah, um, the, the nebulas and asteroids, besides what Jordan talked about uh, slowing you down, your movement, you have to start adjacent to them to be able to move into them. You have to stop no matter what your movement allowance is. They also affect combat. And asteroids negate any um, positive attack um, technologies that you might have. So as you increase your uh, attack technology, no, they, they don't help you in, again, in, when you're in the um, asteroids. And nebulas are just the opposite with defense. Any defense things that you've uh, upgraded are negated in nebulas. And the other thing is that in an asteroid or a nebula, every ship is class E. I'm, I'm done with my cheat. Uh, no, you're still the first player until we actually do our thing. Okay, Jordan, go ahead. He's got it going. Okay. Um, everybody can click that blue symbol that's down by my home planet and hit enter. Does anybody not have all the numbers in the first column? All right, so the uh, the phase sequence on the left side of the board has, you know, a lot of steps, but basically if you just follow it down the, the rows of the production sheet, it, it does everything. So the remain is how many points I had left over from the last economic phase while I was zero. Colony is... Uh, Colony, you know, the production points I'm going to get from all my colonies. Well, all I had to start the game is my home planet. That's 20. So I put 20 in there. I collected one five-value mineral. Uh, the MS, that is uh, pipelines. And there's um, merchant shipping pipelines. And those are ships you can build um, to connect your home world to your colonies. And, you know, basically you have to have a chain from your home world and then in every intervening hex to a colony to have it be connected. And the for every colony that's connected to your home world by a shipping pipeline, you get plus one production point. Well, I don't have any of those, so zero. Add it up, 25. Now my maintenance is equal to the sum of the hull size of all my ships. I have three scouts right now and they each have a hull size of one. So I have my maintenance cost is three. Then the turn bid is, you know, at the beginning of the game we rolled to see who the first player was. Well, after that, every economic phase you have an opportunity to basically give up your production points, spend your production points uh, in a bid to be the first player. So whoever is the high bid here is going to be the start player. Um, in the beginning, I've never seen anybody bid anything other than zero because we're still going pretty much simultaneously, so it's just a waste. I imagine you bid zero, Mike, right? Yeah, I did. I bid zero. Okay, so after I take my total, subtract my maintenance and my turn bid, I get 22 points. And I go and buy my technologies. So the only technology I'm going to buy this turn is ship size. So you can see on the, on the uh, research chart, ship size 2 is the next level. And it costs 10 points. And it will allow me to build destroyers and a base. Now, this is hidden information. Normally, I wouldn't get to know what he spent his money on. 
right? Um, now, when you're buying technology, later on, you know, you're going to have a lot more money. You can, you can buy as many different technologies as you want, but you can only ever increase a technology type by one level per economic phase. So, I couldn't, you know, do two ship size technologies in the same in the same economic turn. Now, after I've researched my technology, I can buy ships. And the reason I say it that way is because if you build a, if you research a tech that lets you build something new, you can you can then build it in the same economic phase. Now, I didn't choose to build any destroyers, but I did build a miner, which cost me five. That's all I decided to do, so I took uh, you know, my 22 minus 15 leaves me 7. And then these, these two things say maintenance plus and minus. The maintenance plus is going to be you know how many more hull size points that I add to my com total fleet. You know, if I had built another scout, I would have put one there. So that next turn, I know I don't have to count each of my ships again every single economic phase. I can go, okay, my maintenance last turn was three, and then plus one from my builds last turn, and then the maintenance minus is anything that got destroyed this turn, and that's my maintenance cost for this turn. Then at the bottom, you know, I on my tech column. I changed my ship size from 1 to 2 to indicate my my technology buy and that's the current level of all my technologies. And that's it. Now after that, I'm going to place the the ships that I built. I built a miner, so I'll go up to the uh I think it's a little crane up top. And it has all of my basically my my force pool here. I have you know, a limited number of counters available to me. Like, for instance, I only have two miners in the game. One's already in play, so I'm going to build my second and last one. And that has to go where I have a shipyard, shipyard that can build it. So, like I was saying before, each of my shipyards can only build one hull point. And for these non-combat ships, like miners and colony ships, they're considered to have a one hull size for building, but not for maintenance purposes. That's why it's not on the counter. So you'll notice, like, up on top where I built, um, I built a colony ship, which cost me eight and three pipelines, three each. That's a, they're each worth one ma uh, hull point, so that's four hull points worth of ships, and that's as much as my shipyard can build at this time. Even though I have three uh, construction points left over, I could have built one more pipeline, but my shipyard's not large enough to do it. That's probably a better first turn build than what I did. The other thing that we were talking about earlier was the... Um, was the uh, um, the upgrade when you when you do a technology in the standard game, um, it applies to all ships that you build after you get that technology. So some of your earlier ships, if you want them to be upgraded in their technology, you have to go back to a shipyard, and then you would do it during the turn phase, not the economic phase. You so you'd have to have some CPUs left over to upgrade your ships. There is a variant that we're doing tonight where it's just automatic. It's a lot less bookkeeping. You don't have to worry about, okay, one of my counters, you know, one of my, my ships with, you know, maybe four destroyers in it are at one technology, and then I have another counter with one destroyer at a different, you know, technology level. This way they're all the same all the time. It's a little quicker and easier but it does take a little bit of strategy away. Now, I was also mentioning in the physical game, each of these counters that you have represents like a fleet. 
and we'll have a numeric counter underneath of it from 1 to 6 to indicate how many ships or you know whatever are in that fleet. In the module though, if uh, you click on my shipyard that's in my home system, you can hit the enter key and it'll bring up its, uh, its properties. And you can see that it has number of ships 4 in there. And then if it had any attack, defense, or tactic technologies available to it, then it, those would be indicated in there also. And that, that's for every counter in the game. Each physical counter can have up to six ships attached. So each, each uh, scout counter could have anywhere from one to six scouts in that counter. All right, now once we've placed our units that we built, the last thing is going to, it says increase colonies. So what we're going to do is um, any, any colonies that were already built are going to increase, so they're going to be uh, incremental build. We're going to start, um, right now our colony ships are going to flip over and become uh, one colony. the ones that found planets, that is. And then, if we had any already constructed one colonies, then they would increase to level 3, and then level 5. And that's you know, represents the number of production points they're going to provide in a future economic phase. So right now, next economic phase, I'm sitting on 22 as my base, just from my colonies. And once we do that, we go back to turn one. Now, because neither of us bid anything for the turn order bid, it stays with whoever was the first player, uh, which was me. But we'll continue simultaneously right now until we explore our whole home system, probably. All right, go ahead. I'm, All right, go ahead. I'm making it crazy here. Go for it. Now you'll notice that um, I'm moving some uh, my MS pipelines up there with the green up on top. The, the counters have a active and a moved side. So if they move in a turn, they have to be on their move side and they don't, um, they don't give you any benefit. They have to be in a space for a turn and not move, then they become active. So you can see the one that's up in my home planet is still active because he didn't move. Um, Jordan will explain to you how the pipelines work, but there's two sides to them. Yeah, I'll mention that right now, actually. The, I already talked about the benefit that the pipelines give you in the economic phase. You know, if they're attached to your colonies, you get a plus one production bonus uh, for each colony that's connected by pipeline to your home world. But they can also benefit you in movement. So any ship counter that starts in a pipeline and does its entire movement along a pipeline can get one extra movement point that it can use to move along that pipeline. But that's only true if that pipe if all the pipeline counters that it started on and moved on are on their active side. So you can't, you know, move a pipeline and then use it in the same turn. All right, explore. Turn two.
All right, I'm done moving. Okay, go ahead and flip. And turn three. Yeah, I'm going to do something stupid. I would never normally do this, but since it's a demo and uh, we're getting crazy, I'm going to show you how stupid this is. This is a great adventure. Yeah. Generally, in deep space, it's always a good idea to get, um, to get the uh, technology for the cruisers. Um, the um, exploration. exploration exploration because you get to look at those deep space counters before you actually move into them because a lot of them are really bad and I'll probably end up losing the ship but I just wanted to show everybody how this works it's really good if your maintenance cost is too high and you want to reduce it yes just kill off your people All right, go ahead and explore. All right, here goes nothing. I'm lost in space. All right, lost in space. When that's revealed, what happens is the, the person to your right um, gets to take all the ships that moved into that hex and move it to any adjacent hex of their choice. Um, it can be an unexplored one, and if they move to an unexplored one, then that's going to get revealed also. But then that loss in space counter is going to get removed, and now that event is out of the game. And that's just a clear hex. So I'm going to go ahead and move you uh, over to the left here. Oh, black, oh hole. black hole. Here we go. Take a die roll and see ya. Yeah. yeah, that's usually what happens when you go into deep space. Now, you can find, if you come across a barren planet, you'll notice up at the very top up there some alien ships. We would place, I believe, at six aliens or five, five or six alien ships four. Four. On, on the four, and then we'd have to fight them immediately, get into a fight with them. Um, you can find things like um, a danger. That's, you're just automatically dead. If you play with the doomsday um, optional rules, you could come across a doomsday machine that's floating around in deep space, and it'll basically hunt you down and kill you. But it won't go into your home planet into your home uh, world, your colored, um, but it w it's pretty nasty. So there's all kinds of wild things that goes on in space. There's also warp points where if you find like a warp point one and there's a warp point one somewhere else on the board, you can fly into it and come out on the other one, uh, which is kind of cool. And it's also used like in the eight player game when you use two maps. So when a warp point on one map comes out and it, Warp point one on a the other map, the other game board comes out. You can go from game board to game board. All 
Okay, now we're at the next economic phase. So we'll go ahead and uh, do those numbers again. We're going to count up the colonies. Yeah, I've got 22 points now. And for me, I've got 22 in colony points, and I also have one of my colonies um, attached by pipeline to my home world. So that colony down there by the by deep space is going to give me one extra for the pipeline. So I'll be at 23. I'm all finished. And then any kind of mines that you that you drug back to, uh, not mines, but uh, minerals that you drug back to your home world, and you use them, then you go ahead and delete them. They're out of the game. They're a one-time use. So if anyone want to take take a look at my uh, production sheet, it's up now. Yeah, um, because I had seven left over from last turn, I ended up with 31 production points this turn and ended up just getting uh, three colony ships so I can get all these planets in my home system colonized. Um, I bid zero again. Yeah, me too. Okay. Then um, increase colonies. So now I had two colonies that are already at one. They're going to increase to three now. And then I call. I you know I found a new planet to colonize. So that's going to become a one. In case you're wondering, each home system has uh, eight regular planets and one barren planet. And they top out at five uh, construction points. If anybody has any questions, just, you know, speak up. Correct. Yeah, exactly. Ready for movement? I'm ready for movement. Yep, I'm ready. All right, let's go.
It can be your colonies. But it has to be a, a colony that's already built. So, you know, like I can't move my... Even if I have like a colony ship on a planet that it hasn't colonized yet in the economic phase, that's not good enough um, to drop the mineral off for that economic phase. Right to flip. Yeah. Turn two. I'm all done. Okay. I found uh, my barren planet in my home system. COBOL is actually a planet, Joel. Yeah, there's some good ones. Yeah, I mean, you can, you can, you know, reference most of these planets to some kind of sci-fi series. Turn three. Indeed. So pretty much both. That In general, yeah. In general. I mean, you can have different strategies if you want to rush or something. Right. Yeah, right. until you get the technology to get out there and explore safely, it is definitely a crapshoot. All right, are we done with uh, three? Yeah, flipping. Okay. No, I know uh, we're an hour. We're, we're an hour into this thing. Do you want to set up a battle just to show how it's going to work? Because we're still a long ways away from actually being able to attack each other. I don't know, Joel. What do you think? Okay. Now what we can't okay. do is we can flip over some of these deep space markers just to kind of see the nastiness. <laughs> yeah, that would have been ugly.
Now you'll notice that there is a, 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 a barren planet over here right above his colony ship. And that would get uh, some aliens on it. So, again, if you had found those guys by just flying into there, you would be in an instant battle with them. Kills you automatically. No, it, no, it goes, goes away. away. No, it goes away. Now there, now there is a which I think is kind of a neat um, uh, extra rule, uh, advanced rule, or I guess it actually be an optional rule. It's called heavy terrain. So when you flip something up, then um, you're going to replace it with another counter, um, unless it's something that stays there, like a nebula or an uh, asteroid. Um, it's going to, it's going to, or it's going to stay there. But if it's like a danger, then you'd put another upside down counter there to be explored again. Which I kind of like. I think I'd prefer to play it that way, actually. Yeah, I kind of do too. It, 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 it's pretty neat. Well, why don't you pull up the battle board? What do you want to show for a battle here? Um, well, let's just get a couple different letters out. And can everybody see the battle board? Okay, so let's we'll pull some stuff out then. Anything else you want to show here, Joel? I mean, Jordan, is there anything else that you want to look at as far as ship-wise? Pull out a Minesweeper. All right. How many ships, how many Minesweepers? Just one. All right, anything else? I've got, uh, like, let's see, I've got uh, three destroyers, one CV, three fighters. I was going to pull out maybe some battle cruisers or something. Oh, yeah, I was going to pull, like, maybe four battle cruisers. Okay. 
Yeah, I've got two carriers, three destroyers, two cruisers, a battle cruiser, a battleship, and six fighters, and two mines. Okay, let me pull out a couple of things. You're going to kill a bunch of stuff. Let me pull out some... Uh... Let's see, what do you have here? Let's go um, some scouts. Yeah, give them point defense. Okay. Actually, what's really cool in this module is you can move your stack of units into the enemy occupied hex, and then you can take that all those units and right click them and say go to battle board and it'll send it to this window, and then after you're done, everything that's survived, you can right-click it, and it'll say, go to map, and it'll send it back to the hex they came from, so you don't have to remember where it was. Let me know when you're all set. Um, okay, all right, that's good enough. I gave a few texts so you can see how that works. Um, right. So go ahead. Flip and over your A guy, over. your E guys. Oh, sorry. All right, so. We got, you know, all of our fleets. Now, something that's important is your technology, we were saying before, is uh, completely secret until it needs to be used. So, you know, that's fine. So then, after everything's revealed, uh, here, one second. So, after everything's revealed, then the first thing we're going to do is, uh, if there's a mine sweeper, and there are mines, the mine sweepers are going to sweep the mines. Now, in the initial level one mine sweeping technology, each mine sweeper can sweep one mine. Now, Mike has one mine sweeper, and I have two mines. So that is going to eliminate one of my mines for sweeping. After all sweeping happens, then all the mines are going to detonate. So I have one mine. I get to choose what it's going to destroy. And I'm going to go ahead and have it destroy one of his battle cruisers. I'll just mark it down. There was four there. Now we're down to three. Okay, and that and my mind goes away. Now, I'm going off the abbreviated sequence of combat here, which is also in the charts where the uh, research and ship charts were. It's the third tab that says charts. And then in the right column, abbreviated sequence of combat. Part E of number one says form battle lines. All that is, is we're going to, you know, we took the, we put them in there, you know, by letter, basically. Uh, we do keep track of the number of the ships. In the physical game, you're going to have the, the numerical counters next to the ship counter, and then as they get destroyed, you'll just reduce that numerical counter. But in the module here, you just click on the ship counter and hit enter, and it shows you how many ships are in that fleet. So step two is determine combat screening. Yeah, Mike, your uh, your carrier there is an E, so it should be in the E section, not the C. All 
Okay, combat screening is uh, basically the person that has more ships, not ship counters, but actual total number of ships on their side, can screen some of their ships. And uh, all that does is makes it so they can't be the target in combat. Now, carriers are automatically screened as long as there are any fighters alive. So I, we can't target each other's carrier until all the fighters are destroyed. So let's figure out how many total ships we have. I've got 14. I have 17. Okay, so you could screen up to three of your ships. But we're not going to because this is a fight to the death. Okay. Now, if it were me, I would probably screen, like, my Minesweeper. Because it's not going to be very effective, but I don't want it to get destroyed. That would be a smart play, but... We're not playing smart right now. Okay. Um, now the next step, determine fleet size bonus. If either side had double the number of ships than the other side, they're going to get a plus one to their two hit number. Now that's unscreened ships. So, you know, if he had double the number of ships in me, but he screened some of them, then he doesn't get that bonus. And that bonus is going to be determined every round of combat um, because the number of ships is going to change as they get destroyed. So then uh, we're going to resolve. So we start with the highest class ship first, so A. My fighters are actually Bs. Um, so the only A ship is my my battleship. And the scouts who all have um, point defense. As long as they're targeting fighters, that's right. Um, so, okay. So we both have the opportunity for our ships to be class A. Um, my tactics rating is zero. Do you have a tactics rating for your scouts? That's a good question. No, I don't. So there's there also. And let's say okay. you're the defender. Okay. I am the defender because I had a mine. There you go. Because that's an important thing is mines can never move into combat. They can only be a defensive unit. So my battleship is going to fire first, and it's going to pick a target. And... Uh, I'm going to pick... The uh, I'll pick uh, one of your fighters. So what I do is I take the attack strength of the ship, which is 5. I add to that any attack technology level that it has. It doesn't have any. So 5. Then I look at his fighter, and I see does it have any defense rating. It does. A defense of one. Nope. Your your fighter tech is level one, so your fighters are a B five zero, and you can see that on the ship chart um, player aid. That's why the fighters have like the star star. It's because depending on your level of fighter technology, they're going to have different stats. But at level 1, they're a 5 attack, 0 defense, with a class B. So, I'm a 5, plus 0 for my tech, minus 0 for your defense, and then I roll... And if I get a five or less, then I hit you, and one of your sh your you take a damage. But because their hull size is one, they would be destroyed. So I'll roll. Two is less than five, 
so you lose a fighter. Done. Done. Yes. Yeah, I, I should try to keep going. Okay, now the other A class ship was your scouts with the uh, point defense. So now, if they want to attack fighters, then they can use their point defense to attack right now. And all six of them will yeah, att attack will. your fighters? Yeah, all six of them will attack your fighters? Okay. Now, even though you have six counters, uh, or six ships in one fleet counter, each ship can attack individually, and it could pick separate targets. So, and you can see the result of one of your shots before you choose the next target. So, you know, you're going to roll them one at a time, basically. Yeah, in a situation like this, since I have six scouts and he has six individual fighters, um, they're just going to, I don't have to actually look at each one because all six of them are going to shoot at him. So I'm going to go ahead and roll six dice real quick here. All right, now, what was your point defense level? Uh, I put it at two. Okay, so that means that your scouts had an attack rating of seven against fighters, and I had defense of zero, so your two hit, did they have an attack technology at all? No. So you had a two hit of seven. That's going to be one, two, three, four hits, so I'm going to lose four fighters. And then I move my um, my scouts to the um, U side. Right. All right. Now the all the A ships have fired. So now all the B ships are going to fire. Now it looks like your fighters uh, have tactics rating too, and I have no tactics rating. So your fighters will get to fire first among the beasts. This kind of gives you a good uh, indication of how important the technologies are. Even just little like one defense or one offense really makes a big difference in the die rolling in the, in the long run when you're rolling lots of dice. So it's really important to get your technologies up. Okay, so the uh, fighters, uh, how many are left? You have two fighters left. Okay, they'll, uh, well, the, uh, they're both going to target um, your battle cruiser. They're in B. Okay. The ones that haven't right. shot yet. So... Your two hit is a their fighter tech two, so that means they're a six attack rating. Plus they have one attack technology, makes it a seven. And then my battle cruiser has a defense of one, so that reduces it back to six. And I rolled a one and an eight, so only one hit. Okay. Now because my battle cruiser has a hull size of two. It's going to take a damage, but it's not destroyed yet. All right, now your battle cruiser doesn't have any tactics, 
So, oh. as the defender, I get to fire my guys first, and then your battle cruiser will get to go. So I think um, all my my two fighters are going to attack your battle cruiser. Their fighter tech two, so there's six. No tech, and then your defense. Your defense uh, for the ship is one, but your technology is two, so that makes it all the way up to three. You want so to that, knock means that, that means that... Why don't we knock his defense down to one? All right. So what is it now? Defense of one. All right, so my attack is a six, his defense is a one, so I'm two hit is a five, and I get to roll two dice. Plus the one on the counter, so it'd be actually a four. Okay, well, it's still one hit, so he's damaged. Now my battle cruiser will attack your battle cruiser, and it's... Um, I'm a 5, minus 2, one for your counter and one for your tech, so now I'm on 2 hit on a 3. Nope. Okay, uh, the battle cruiser, there's what, 3 of them there? There's 3 battle cruisers with an attack of 2. So, um, the first one will go after your battle cruiser. You have, uh, th oh, how many battle cruisers do you have there? You have one. Oh, that'll be one. one. Oh, that'll be one. Okay, so the first battle cruiser will go after your battle cruiser. He's a five plus attack of two makes seven minus one for your battle cruiser is six. Do you have any defensive technology? Nope. Okay, so it's a six. We'll roll two, so that would actually destroy that battle cruiser and now this battle cruiser still has two more shots left um so you've got one uh cruiser left okay so the two the two battleships are going to fire oh yeah there's two remaining battle cruisers they'll both fire at the uh cruiser we're a five six seven minus one makes it a six and no defense, so uh, we'll go ahead and uh, two die rolls at six, a nine's a miss, and a two's a hit, so only one hit on there. And the B's are finished. Okay, only I have C's, so they'll fire. Um, I have one cruiser out of four with no technology, and he will uh, he'll attack your he'll attack. destroyer. Yeah, I'm, I marked it down to just one destroyer. Okay, so he'll attack your destroyer. Um... Like I said, I'm a four, and you're at zero with one defense tech. So, tech, so no, let's let's three, make it three. Let, let, let's make it zero. Okay, so I'm I'm two hit on a four. I hit, and destroyer is destroyed. Then my destroyers get to shoot. I have three of them. And um, I'll have them go after the fighters. So I'm a four, no tech, and then your fighters are zero. So two hit on a four. 
and they have a defense of one, so three. Three rolls on a three. And I roll terribly. That wasn't very helpful. Okay, and okay, now, the that, ease. now the ease. Yeah, the ease will go. Do you have tactics? I'm checking. I don't think so. No, no tactics. Okay, then my carrier gets to shoot first. And it'll shoot at your one of your scouts. So it's a uh, three, and your scouts have defense one, so a hit on a two. Hit. So uh, you lose a scout. Lose. Yep, that'll do one of them in. One of them in. And so the only thing sort of left of these um, E's over here. All right, so we will go ahead and um, attack. What's your defense on your fighters? Nothing. All right. Um, the the minesweeper is going to take a shot there. He needs a one to get a hit on one of the fighters. And uh, this, there's one CV. He's an attack strength of three. He'll fire at the fighters. He needs a three. He rolls a four, not good enough. All right, now that every ship has had an opportunity to fire, we would start the second round of combat. And combat's going to continue until either one side's destroyed or everybody retreats. Now, in the first round, no one can retreat. Everybody has to fire. But starting on the second round, when the ship has the opportunity to fire, it can instead retreat. And that's probably what I'll be doing. Yeah, that gives everybody a good look at how um, battles work. You might, people might have questions at this point on this. It's because they were upgraded with point defense um, technology. And basically what that is, it's the anti-fighters. So if I shoot with my scouts against fighters, they're an A6. If I don't fire at fighters with them, they're an E with a 3 attack. So it's the defense against fighters. Everything has a technology to counter it in this game. Mines get countered by mine sweepers. Um, raiders have a, technology, a special technology, um, but destroyers can um, get um, cloaking um, with the anti, the scanners, which negates the cloaking ability of the raiders. So everything has a counter to it. Any questions from anybody? Well, everybody got to see how movement worked and how, uh, you know, how you colonize and try to get your economic engine going. And then, you know, battle shows you if you don't have any, you know, technologies, it can be kind of rough in battle. So, you know, you want to have technologies um, and shows you kind of how deep space worked. Now, if you did like um, 
stumble across that barren planet with the aliens. Let's say I stumbled into there. Well, then the player, either to my right or left, I forget what it is, he would be the one that actually uses the aliens. And I'll, I'll okay, there you go, flip those over. You can see that they have a class and an attack and a defense strength. But you wouldn't know that until you flew uh, in. After all combat in that space area is resolved and you win and the you know, so you would attack their their hex with their colony and then all their ships would either be destroyed or retreat and leaving just your fleet with their colony. After all of that, every one of your ships gets one shot at the colony using just its attack rating and attack technology. So the, the colony doesn't have any defense or defense tech or and they don't get to fire back. And for every hit, it reduces the colony by one level. So if it's a 5 CP colony, it'll get hit, it'll go down to a 3 and then a 1. And if you get a hit on a 1, then it's destroyed. And if you're playing... Okay, with, so then... No, then you'd have to fly over, you know, with a colony ship and start it all over again. Yes, you would do that. Also, in the, like in the shortened game, um, every colony point, so I, if, let's say, I, Jordan had retreated and, and I shot with those ships and I was able to kill his colony, I would get one colony point um, towards victory. And you need three colony points to win. So um, that's a colony point that can never be taken away from me. Now, if I'd gone over here to that alien planet with those alien ships, and I was able to kill them and colonize that planet and bring it up all the way up to a five, you know, full strength, then I get a colony point for that as long as I can keep it. If Jordan would come over and, and, and knock my colony down, then um, I would lose that colony point. So colony points you kill of opponent, or you can't take them away, uh, but the ones that you colonize in deep space can be. I think we covered pretty much everything.